Hello and welcome to Diabet Tech. I'm Justin and on this channel I talk all things diabetes tech, news, management and beyond. Today I've got an awesome episode for you. I spoke with Lou Lintor, the chief engineer of automated delivery systems at Medtronic about the future of Medtronic, all the future technology they're working on. This is just one part of a much longer interview that I did on my podcast. This part wasn't on it. This is a special episode. First, we talk about the Simplera and Instinct CGM that they're working on. It is a disposable CGM and it is much smaller than the Guardian 4 and there's a lot to talk about that. Now we also get into meal detection with a thing called Clue. They're working on a system that can track your arm movements as you're eating and let you know that you should bolus and even one day bolus for you, which mind blowing. And I would love to see that in the future because carb counting and bolusing can always be a bit of a hassle. Also, we get into the fact that Medtronic is currently working to acquire a South Korean patch pump company called EOFlow. Very exciting news. The deal hasn't closed yet, so there's really only so much he could say, but I will be reporting on that in the future once the deal closes. Also, like I said, this is part of a longer conversation that we had on the 780G system, which is their new algorithm that has the lowest target range of 100 milligrams per deciliter, a seven day infusion set, and is much better at meal detection. If you wanna learn about that system, you gotta watch the episode on my podcast coming out next week on all major podcast platforms and on YouTube. All right, let's get into this interview. Lou, thank you so much for coming on the YouTube channel. Now, we also just finished recording the podcast episode, which isn't going to air until next week. Uh, that's all on the 780G. But on this video, I want to talk all about the future of Medtronic. There's a lot of very cool pieces of tech that you're currently working on that seem to be in the near future. And the first one I want to start with is Simplera. Uh, Simplera is your upcoming CGM. Can you just give us a little explanation as to what Simplera is? Sure. Simplera is our next generation sensor. And we basically have reimagined our whole CGM. Uh, our current design, our Guardian 4 sensor, that's with 780G. It's a two-piece design, has a disposable sensor, a durable transmitter. You have to recharge the transmitter. Um, I think probably most people are familiar kind of with that, that concept. Uh, Simplera is a single piece design, fully disposable. The adhesive is integrated into the device itself. The insertion process takes all of 10 seconds. You, the device comes preloaded in a in its serter. So you pull the serter out of the box, you untwist the cap, you find the part of your body you want it on and one click insertion, no over taping and it's done. Um, it, it has a two hour warm up period. So after two hours, uh, you're getting sensor glucose values, no finger sticks required. So it's a calibration free CGM. It's everything that we want and probably people with diabetes want in a, in a CGM. So that, that is our Simplera sensor. Then there's also one that works separately, right? The, the instinct. Yeah. So the Simplera sensor is designed to work only as a standalone CGM solution. So for people who don't have an insulin pump, they don't, maybe they don't want an insulin pump, whatever. They would, they just want a standalone CGM, look at their, you know, sensor glucose on our, on their smartphone. That would be the Simplera. Uh, the instinct sensor is the same CGM technology as, as Simplera. It's the same form factor, easy to insert, no finger sticks, all that, but it's designed to integrate uh, and connect to our closed loop pumps. So the instinct sensor would be designed to work with our 780G as an example, and, uh, and, and not just a standalone app. So the same sensor, one's just a standalone solution and one is a pump integrated solution. What is the warm up time each time you're putting them on? The warm up time is uh, two hours. So after you put it on, uh, the first sensor glucose value will come in two hours later after the insertion. And so that's, it's a fixed time. It's just two hours. Are you able to, so what I love about using the Dexcom G7 right now is that I can put a new one on and that one warms up as I'm wearing the old one. So effectively there is no wait time. There's a warm up time, the 30 minute warm up time. There's no wait time. 
Will that be possible with Simplera? Is that has that been announced at all? That will be possible, um, and uh, it's, it's for both the Simplera and the Instinct, where where you can do that. Uh, and you know, we're we're continuing. It'll it'll be possible in the first generation of this sensor, but we're also working on um, improvements to that that ex that experience as well to help walk people through it in a more streamlined fashion right now people just kind of have to manage the timing and that on their own um, but we can we can do some things in software that can almost automate that swap for you and just make it easy for the user to do it but it is it will be possible okay and how long could someone wear how long does it last the sensor it's a seven day wear sensor okay and are there plans for uh to to elongate that in the future? Yes. Um, in fact, the, the sensor technology that is going to follow the the Simplera and Instinct, uh, the goal of that is to, um, among other things, but extend the, le the, the wear time up to a 14-day wear. Okay, great. Now, timeline. I know in November 2022, the Simplera and in, 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 both the Simplera and the Instinct or, or one of them uh, were submitted for CE Mark approval in the EU. Um, was it was it both? It of was them? Simplera. Or is that oh Simplera? Okay, so Simplera was uh, sent in. What about the FDA in the US? Has that been sent yet? We have also submitted uh, Simplera to the FDA as well. Yeah. Okay. When did that happen? That happened around the same time as we got approval for okay. the 780G. Okay. Amazing. And do you have a timeline for, has the FDA given you a timeline or this, or the Euro, Europe's um, CE mark? Um, have they spoken to you about like timeline for that at all? The, yeah, the timelines, they're pretty variable and we can't, they're, and they're unfortunately unpredictable. Um, and mm -hmm. so, and I, and I'm not really not at liberty to speak about timelines of, 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 of yeah. product launches at this point, but, um, but ah. it's, it's up to the FDA um, they, they are working through the approval process as we speak, and it's just basically up to them to, to approve the product so that we can start commercialization. Next up, I want to talk about meal detection. We kind of spoke on meal detection a bit with the 780G and, and those advancements with that system, but I know that you're also working on another system called Clue with a K. What is Clue? Yeah, so big picture, we're trying to find a way to eliminate the burden of carb counting and meal announcements for users. So there are numbers of ways to do that. Uh, meal detection technology is one of them, where we can look at sensor glucose values and trends and patterns and figure out when the user uh, has eaten a meal and we can you know, take action with the algorithm, more aggressive dosing as an example. Um, Clue is a different approach where it, instead of looking at CGM and estimating whether or not the user is eaten, actually looking at gestures that the user is making with their hands. And so in a Clue device, the user would wear a smartwatch, uh, say an Apple Watch, and they'd have the Clue app installed in the Apple Watch. And the, the Clue app has algorithms that are trained to uh, identify gestures with the dominant hand, the hand you wear your watch on, that are indicative of eating. And, or drinking, and and they're surprisingly accurate. <laughs> I mean, you can. I've, I've done demonstrations with this in the past, where you know people are skeptical, of course, like, well, how does it know I'm I'm eating and not you know steering my steering wheel in my car or playing the violin or something, you know, and and um, and you can even in in many cases like try to fake it out, like pretend you're holding a glass of water and like bringing it to your mouth, and it won't detect that <laughs> as an, a drinking gesture until you actually put a wow. glass of water in your hand, and then go through the actual drinking motion. They're 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 pretty they're pretty accurate that way, and so the idea with Clue then is if we can detect with a high degree of accuracy eating gestures, we can actually administer therapy based on those individual gestures. So you can, uh, in a sense, it's like every time you put a bite of food into your mouth, we can give you a, a small dose of insulin to bolus you for that, that one bite of food. You put another bite, we'll give you another dose. And then when you stop eating, we just stop gi giving you doses. And so it's, it's, it's kind of a, a way wow. to give you just the right amount of insulin for what you're eating. Of course, we have to, there's some guesstimates of like, well, what actually are they eating? Are they eating, you know, a green leaf salad or are they eating, you know, sushi, you know, what, whatever. And so, um, uh, but nevertheless, we can, in the, in the using 
think technologies like Clue in conjunction with meal detection technology, in conjunction with automatic correction boluses, you can come up with a solution that actually can eliminate the need for users to actually bolus the count carbs and bolus their, their own meals. What you said, it does sound very realistic based off of even features that exist today with with my Apple Watch, fall detection, which can detect when you fall, like have a very bad fall and will even call emergency services or washing your hands during the pandemic. There, you know, Apple introduced that feature. It knows when you're washing your hands. So that's super interesting. It's asking you, do you want a bolus, right? Like, is that the first step? Asking like, do you want a bolus? Kind of tracking that, then eventually heading toward like, we're gonna bolus for you. Well, it depends on if you're talking about a a pump integrated solution or like a smart pen solution. Okay, so um, where the user is administering their own insulin. So in a pump integrated solution, we want to automate as much as we can, and so we're, we're we we. If, if we can avoid it, we don't want to ask, you know, interrupt the user and ask them a bunch of questions on their app. Are you eating? And do you want to take your bolus now or not? And because that's just, you know, it's just an interruption. If, if, if we can do it safely, automatically. So I think on the pump side, we're, we're really looking more towards full automation. On the, say, a standalone CGM a smart pen um, application. Well, there the user is administering their own insulin, and so they would need some cues, like when is it a good time to to give insulin? Uh, maybe I forgot my bolus, and if this if the if the clue watch starts detecting eating gestures, and the smart pen has not recorded a dose in your app, you know now it can pop up a notification and say, hey, it looks like you're eating, you haven't bolused. Maybe you should take your bolus now, uh, and so that would be a very useful feature for for users, more so in a kind of a smart pen paradigm than in a pump paradigm. So that's that's kind of how we're we're looking at it. Yeah, and what watches are you hoping to bring this technology to, or rather, even what watches are even capable of this? Well, I think almost any smart watch on the market now. Would have the capability. I mean, the, the technology of these these devices is improving. You know, you know better than I do probably how, how quickly it's 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 improving. Um, uh, I mean, the original Clue device, and we're not we're not you know close yet to commercializing this. So you know, yeah, we're we're kind of talking you know future technologies. But say that the current uh, Clue system uh, is designed really to work on an Apple Watch. But there's no there's nothing particular about an Apple Watch that, you know, makes it not workable on an Android watch. Um, we're also looking at, you know, potentially, you know, for, for people who don't have an Apple Watch, it's like, well, I don't want to buy the inexpensive Apple Watch just to get an eating reminder with my smart pen, you know, and so I, it's, gee whiz, it's cool technology, but it's just not worth it to me. Uh, so we're also looking at, well, can we maybe integrate uh, this technology into a a smaller, less expensive, like a, a fitness band that you might wear, uh, and that that's actually so inexpensive we could just ship it with you along with your smart pen, just almost as as a free part of the system. So we're also looking at those options too. Again, th thinking about how can we provide people the best outcomes, lowest burden, and and you know as as inexpensively as possible. Wow, that's incredible. I, I love that. Now, I want to end this video with something you kind of mentioned in the podcast episode and kind of like blew my mind, <laughs> is that Medtronic absorbed a company that had a patch pump. So you are in possession of that. You're working on that. Is there anything you can kind of tell me about that? Any insight? Yeah, not not too much yet. I mean, it is very hot off the press. Very, very recent announcement, just in the okay. last like couple of weeks. Um, and so, uh, but... I can tell you, we are all very excited about it. Uh, you know, a, a patch pumps are going to be a big part of our future. Maybe not the only part of our future, but definitely a very big part. Um, there's a certain segment of the uh, population with people with diabetes who um, will only want to use a patch pump for one reason or another, and so we want to provide solutions for them. And so we, yes, we acquired a company called EO Flow. They have a patch pump. They call their EO Patch device. And um, it's just, like I said, hot off the press, but we are actively working on staffing up, assigning projects, trying to figure out how can we as quickly as possible do basically two things, integrate our next generation CGM into the device uh, so that they can, they can start like 
you know, uh, get ready for a closed loop, and then, I'll, then of course, migrate our closed loop algorithms into the device so that we can have, for lack of a, a better description, kind of a, a 780G on a patch pump. Wow, Lou, thank you so much. I think we're even like over time. So thank you so much for giving me even more time for the podcast episode, this YouTube video. We covered so much. I feel like even closer to a Medtronic Pro. Um, <laughs> I know way more than I did before this. So this has just been such a great conversation. And it's got me so much more excited about the future of diabetes technology than I was <laughs> like two hours ago. So thank you so much. I would love to have you on the show again. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to talk again soon about a new algorithm that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, well, maybe maybe soon. Yeah, so, but, but thanks for having me on. It was really a pleasure speaking with you. And I'd be happy to come on again at, at any time. If you're a Medtronic user, I want to hear your thoughts on the future of Medtronic. Let me know in the comments how you feel about your system now and where it's going. And for those of you not on Medtronic, I would love to hear what you think on how this all relates to just the grand scheme of things. As always, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more video content and my podcast every Monday. And give this video a like, that way other people can find it. I'm Justin, and I'll take you later.